My name is Anand Raman Subramanian, and this is Anand uh, Srinivasan. We are both in biomedical engineering department at the University of Texas at San Antonio. In this video abstract, we will describe to you a microarray platform for the culture of microorganisms that are encapsulated in a hydrogel matrix. And also, we'll describe to you some of our observations in screening antimicrobial drugs in these systems. As you will see, the conclusions that are drawn from this work are in general applicable for three-dimensional tissue-engineered systems. Conventionally, microbial cultures are performed in large Erlenmeyer flasks, or petri dishes, or test tubes, or well plates. In such cases, the volumes range from a few hundreds of microliters to a few hundreds of milliliters or even liters. This has been in practice for a long, long time now. However, recently, we have developed a microarray platform on a microscope glass slide or a chip that we call for the culture of microorganisms in volume as small as few tens of nanoliters. Such a system is very efficient in cutting down the cost, reagent volume, assay time, and also allows for a truly high-throughput screening in drug discovery and diagnostics. The microbial cellular microarray, or the microbial chip, consists of a modified glass surface, and we spotted 30 nanoliters of cells mixed with hydrogel solutions such as collagen or alginate. The cells grow inside this gel, and the effect of drugs can be tested by exposing each of the spots to different concentrations of various drugs, and by quantifying cell viability using a live dead stain and a standard DNA microarray scanner. Some of the advantages of this chip are small volume, rapid, easy handling, simple dunk and rinse procedures, and high sensitivity readouts. In this work, we cultured biofilms of fungal pathogen Canada albicans encapsulated in collagen or alginate matrices on the chip, and it forms these beautiful biofilms in three dimension. We then tested the effect of common antifungal compound called caspofungin on the biofilms, and interestingly, we found that only the biofilms grown in alginate is susceptible to caspofungin, but not when grown in collagen. We wanted to know why is that the biofilms grown in collagen is less susceptible to caspofungin than when grown in alginate. We thought that the difference in susceptibility of the fungi to caspofungin in different matrices may be because of the distribution of drug in the two matrices. Since we can't really visualize the drugs, we use cell viability as a surrogate to visualize drug distribution in the gels. So we tested the biofilm spots on the microarray with drugs stained with fluorescent dye and visualized the spots by confocal microscopy. We used two dyes. One is green fluorescent live stain, while the other is a blue fluorescent cell wall stain. First, let's look at the biofilms that are not treated with any drugs. As you can see, the biofilms can be seen as trans, and it looks whitish because of the overlay of green and blue colors. The cells look alike in both collagen and alginate gels. But when we look at the biofilms treated with caspofungin, we see that the cells in the collagen and alginate look very different. The cell density has gone down significantly throughout the depth of the alginate gels, but not so much in collagen gels. This shows that caspofungin is concentrated only on the top and does not reach the bottom in collagen gels, but not in alginate. We have also quantified these visual observations and have further confirmed using HPLC. In essence, what our data shows is that the apparent susceptibility of candida albicans to an antifungal drug may depend upon the environment that the cells are in. So one can imagine similar effects that may influence the results you obtain in three-dimensional tissue engineer engineered systems where the responses may depend upon the scaffolding material. Hence, by choosing either an inert matrix or a protein-rich matrix such as alginate or collagen, one can understand the effect of drug action on cells per se or the cumulative effect due to an extracellular matrix environment you find in vivo. For a more detailed study, we welcome you to read our article in the Biotechnology and Bioengineering Journal. Thank you very much.